Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about books and authors that I love. In this video, I'm going to rank the Clive Barker novels from my least favorite to my absolute favorite. For this ranking, I will not be considering his short story collections, The Books of Blood, which are amazing, or the graphic novels, The Books of Abarat, or his sh short novellas such as Mr. Maximilian or The Infernal Parade. But I will be taking into consideration his short novels um, such as The Hellbound Heart or The Thief of Always. In total, there are 13 books in this ranking. And this ranking is purely subjective based on my opinions and my experiences when reading Clive Barker's work. Of course, you might have a different opinion. I would love to hear what you think of my ranking, what your favorite Clive Barker books are, so please leave your comments below. Kicking off the ranking at number 13 is Cabal. Published in 1988, Cabal tells the story of a young man, his psychiatrist, and a serial killer and an underground society of fantastical creatures. It was made into a movie called Nightbreed, directed by Clive Barker and starring David Cronenberg as the psychiatrist. I haven't seen it, but I did read Cabal in my early 20s, and I remember liking it a lot. But I read it again some 20 years later, and that time it didn't work on me. I didn't believe the central love story between the young man and his fiance. I felt that neither of them was really in love or even deserved to be in love. And that was a problem I just couldn't get past. Cabal is probably the only Clyde Barker book I didn't really enjoy. Every other book in this ranking I liked and am happy to recommend, but Cabal just didn't work for me. So it's at number 13. At number 12, Galilee. Published in 1998, Galilee is an epic fantasy centered around a family of half-gods, half-humans. I really enjoyed this book. I am surprised that it is so low in my ranking, but that just goes to show how much I like Clive Barker's work. I thought the god characters were well done and how the humans interacted with them was interesting with a good mix of reverence and fear and sometimes desire, which was effective. The narrative device of the book is that a human member of the family wants to write the story of the family. So that's what we're reading, um, his work in progress based on interviews and research and retelling old tales. I found that the narrative device made the story a bit cumbersome. I didn't much care for the narrator, but the story he tells is compelling. Otherwise, a very good book. Galilee, it's at number 12. At number 11, Everville. Published in 1994, Everville is the second book in the two-part series, The Books of the Art. I think you probably have to read the first book before reading Everville. I'm not sure if Everville works as a standalone. Basically, the art is a kind of mythical power that people are willing to go to extreme lengths to possess and it tends to have a destructive influence on those who pursue acquiring it. So we follow people in pursuit of the art and people who are trying to prevent them from getting it. The story begins in 1884 and continues into the 1990s. I love the villains, uh, very cool, very intriguing. The fantastical action scenes are all very well done. Clive Barker is quite good at writing action scenes especially when supernatural elements are involved. Everville is a good read. I really enjoyed it. And it's at number 11 on my list. Coming in at number 10, Imagica. Published in 1991, Imagica is a thick, epic fantasy novel that explores a world in a parallel dimension and efforts to reconcile that world with our own battles between those who want the reconciliation and those who do not. I've read interviews with Clive Barker where he states unequivocally that A Magica is his favorite of his novels. I really enjoyed it too, but there are others I prefer. In A Magica, we have great characters. In particular, there's a slave character 
who can change appearances based on what the master wants. And many of the characters are compelled to one another in interesting and sometimes conflicting ways. We travel across fantastical worlds that are often at war. It's a great fantasy novel. It's Clive Barker's favorite, but for me, it comes in at number 10. At number nine, The Scarlet Gospels. Published in 2015, The Scarlet Gospels is a continuation or a conclusion to the Hellraiser series, which was started in 1986 with the Hellbound Heart. Upon its publication, The Scarlet Gospels was the subject of some controversy. Many fans of the movie franchise Hellraiser were not happy because in The Scarlet Gospels, Clive Barker goes against much of the mythos of these movies. He changed the nature and the motivation of the Cenobites and the central character, Pinhead. In my opinion, these are Clive Barker's characters. He can do what he wants with them. I understand that the Scarlet Gospels doesn't line up with the Hellbound Heart, but personally, I'm okay with that. In the Scarlet Gospels, we have the paranormal detective, Harry Damour, who follows Pinhead to Hell. So we get a tour of Hell, which I thought was very well done, great descriptions. And the conflict between Pinhead and Lucifer I thought was very interesting. I understand it goes against what the Hellbound Heart and the Hellraiser movies had established, but I liked the Scarlet Gospels for what it is. A good read, and it comes in at number nine. At number eight, The Thief of Always. Published in 1992, The Thief of Always is a short novel for young readers, but it works very well for adults too. I remember reading it when I was in my early 20s and I loved it then. I've reread it recently and uh, I loved it the second time too. The story is about an 11 year old boy who goes to the holiday house where a full year is packed into every single day. Meaning every day there's Halloween with all the candy and Christmas with all the presents. And what the thief of always manages to do, and quite effectively, is to uh, exalt and celebrate the in-between times. The times when we aren't uh, excited or, or overjoyed. And how we can find meaning and fulfillment in these less celebrated times. And it's very effective. Reviews on Goodreads called it uh, a perfect book, life-changing, powerful. It's one of his more well-received books, and for a good reason. It's an excellent read. For me, it only comes in at number eight because it's short. It's not as immersive as his longer works, but I love the book, and it comes in at number eight. At number seven, Sacrament. Published in 1996, Sacrament is probably Clive Barker's most emotional book, or at least the one that resonated with me the most on an emotional level. In Sacrament, we have a strained father-son relationship between the protagonist and his father. The protagonist also returns to San Francisco at the height of the AIDS outbreak, and we get a very emotional account of the, of the destruction that disease did and continues to do. The protagonist and the villain are linked in a compelling way, which is something typical of Clive Barker's work. Often in his work, there is a specific circumstance, um, frequently an emotional one, that binds the villain and the protagonist. Sacrament is one of the best examples of that from Clive Barker. And for me, it comes in at number seven. At number six, The Great and Secret Show. Published in 1989, The Great and Secret Show is the first book in the two-part series, The Books of the Art. A common characteristic of Clive Barker's novels is that he tends to write superb opening scenes. The Great and Secret Show might have the best opening scene of all his novels, which is saying a lot. In the opening scene, we have a character who works at a mail hub in Omaha, Nebraska. 
He has to sort through mail to expedite it correctly. And he begins to notice patterns or coded messages. The novel eventually ends up in Southern California, near Hollywood. And it gets a little silly for me at that point, but the action scenes are expertly written. The concept of the art as a destructive power that people fight and kill to possess works very well. And the strength of the opening puts The Great and Secret Show at number six. Coming in at number five, The Damnation Game. Published in 1985, The Damnation Game was Clyde Barker's first novel, coming on the heels of the success of his short story collections, The Books of Blood. The Damnation Game probably has the best opening scene in all of Clive Barker's novels. Which I know, I just said the same thing for The Great and Secret Show. It's debatable. But the opening scene in The Damnation Game is fantastic. It takes place in Warsaw immediately after World War II. Warsaw is a dangerous, decimated wasteland where people gamble and place bets on anything, including the morbid and the sick. And that is the central idea behind this book, wherein a gambling addict works for a man who had made a Faustian deal with a devilish character during World War II. Clyde Barker has been writing in two camps, fantasy and horror, sometimes combining the two. Of his novels, uh, the Damnation Game might be the one that sits most firmly in the horror camp. It has quite a bit of horrific and graphic violence. Maybe that's why I liked it so much, plus the opening is brilliant. At number four, The Hellbound Heart. Published in 1986, a year after The Damnation Game, The Hellbound Heart is a short novel and probably Clyde Barker's most famous after the Books of Blood. It was made into a movie, Hellraiser, directed by Clyde Barker, which is now a horror movie classic and has spawned a franchise that currently consists of 11 movies and counting. In The Hellbound Heart, we have a common theme of Clyde Barker in the mixing or confusing of pain and pleasure. There are otherworldly creatures called Cenobites, who invents new ways to torture and deform the flesh. <clears throat> and they do so in search of pleasure. We also have another common theme in Clyde Barker's work, puzzles. Here we have the lament configuration, which is a puzzle box, which when solved will summon the Cenobites who will drag the solver of the puzzle to hell to be tortured. It's a fun read with great characters making evil decisions and paying a high price for them, which is exactly what you want in a horror book. Coming in at number three, Cold Heart Canyon. Published in 2001, Cold Heart Canyon is a work of horror slash fantasy. It features many of the staples of a Clive Barker novel, a brilliant opening, some kind of gateway to another world, one which contains much darkness and violence, and the blending or confusing of pleasure and pain. The story is basically about a young actor who takes refuge outside of Hollywood in a mansion with a cruel history and that still harbors many ghosts, some grotesque, some seductive, some both. Cold Heart Canyon is the book I would recommend to someone who has never read a Clive Barker novel. It's both fantasy and horror, and it's arguably his most Clive Barker-ish. It's just missing a puzzle, but it has all the other staples of Clive Barker's work. The horror erotica, a story spanning generations and continents, and a sad protagonist who finds strength through adversity. So we're down to the last two, and coming in at number two is Mr. Be Gone. Published in 2007, Mr. Be Gone is a short fantasy horror tale narrated by a demon. 
starts by addressing the reader and imploring them to burn the book. And this request is repeated several times in the opening chapter, pleading, and threatening, and even resorting to bribery. I thought it would be difficult to ma maintain this tone throughout the book, this humoristic addressing the reader approach, but I was pleasantly surprised at how effective it was done, in my opinion. Reading other reviews of this book, I can see you're either on board with it or you're not. If you are, you're in for a fun ride with a good payoff, in my opinion. Though it's not scary or disturbing like his other books can be, which I love, uh, I found Mr. B. Gone to be unique, witty, inventive, and just a lot of fun to read. So it ranks as my second all-time favorite Clive Barker book, which means that coming in at number one, Weave World. Published in 1987, Weave World is about a magical world of magical creatures that seeks to hide from our magic-hating world by weaving itself into a rug. Admittedly, when I read the premise, I was not really on board with it, but I read the book because I read everything that Clyde Barker puts out, and I was blown away. Weave World has probably my favorite villain of all the Clyde Barker books in The Salesman. He wants to take possession of the rug and sell it to the highest bidder. And he has a magical coat that he uses to make nefarious deals with people. The heroes of the book sympathize with the magical world and they try to protect it from the salesman and his cohorts or protect the rug from the salesman and his cohorts. It's a dark fantasy novel with plenty of action, compelling sympathetic characters, fantastical creatures, and a hidden magical world. It was a blast to read and it remains my all-time favorite Clive Barker book. So that's my ranking. I would love to hear what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree with my ranking? Please leave your comments below. I try to respond to all of them. Check out my channel for other authors' rankings. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. My next author's novel rankings will most likely be British horror writer Adam Neville, but I still have some reading to do before then. Speaking of reading, I also want to encourage you to check out my books. Though I don't write fantasy, if you like Clyde Barker as much as I do, there's a chance you'll like my writing too. I have a short story collection, The Orthography of Madness and Misgivings, which takes the stories previously published in anthologies and literary reviews and compiles them into one book spanning three years of my career and the five countries I was living in during the creation of these stories. So the book is divided into five sections according to the country I was living in and uh, each section is prefaced with a short biographical essay. It's like travelogue fiction, if that's a thing. I have a shorter collection of modern tongue-in-cheek horror fables titled Stories to Tell Your Children, assuming you are a very bad parent. A collection of five novellas of psychological horror, Delirium's Muse, published by Running Wild Press. It is also available in French, à l'abri de la raison. I did this myself, so it is more of a reimagining than a proper translation. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Happy reading.